Hey, what's up, guys? And girls. Wait, is guys or male and female, or just male? Yep. Anyway, so today we're talking about the Battle of the Eureka Stockade. Now, some of you guys may have seen this flag before. There's been news in neo Nazi marches and even draped over the coffins of dead communist leaders. And. and. and the CFMEU. Thanks, Tao. So keep watching and you'll see how the battle of freedom is fought. There should be an intro about. <music> Justice, freedom and democracy are some of the values fought for in the battle of the Eureka Stockade. 22 miners lost their lives alongside with some red coats. As bleak as the losses may seem, this is the beginning of freedom in Australia. Freedom to have a vote. Freedom to have a voice. Freedom to be voicing your... Freedom. Wait, what? Now some guys may be wondering what the hell is the Eureka Stockade or not. Now before I can answer that question, I must take you back to where it all started. The Gold Rush. The Gold Rush was a time of major immigration for Australia. It did not start until 1851. Gold has been founded before 1851. But the government tried not to spread the news in fear of destabilizing the economy and further reducing the workforce as most of the men would go into the mine fields to mine for gold. However, the California Gold Rush, which began in 1848 to 1849, droves of people from Australia soon left the country to mine for gold in California. Realizing the crisis, the government sent out a reward for anyone who can find gold. In Australia, of course. Edward Hammond Hargraves returns from California to try and find gold in Australia with the newly acquired prospecting skills he learned from over there. Arriving in Australia, probably by boat, he already has experience in mining gold, back in the Californian gold rush. On February 12, 1851, he and a young man called Lister were working along Lewis Pond Creek, near Bathurst, in New South Wales, when his instincts told him he was surrounded by gold. Filling a pan with the gravelly soil and sluicing it in the creek, he saw the glints of gold. There it is, he cried, or so he later remembered. I shall be a baronet. You will be knighted, and my old horse will be stuffed and put into a glass case and sent to the British Museum. None of this came true, but word quickly spread, which has brought hordes of people with gold madness in hope of finding gold. Hargraves called the place Ofer, I believe you pronounce it Ofer, after a gold producing field in the Old Testament. The Australian gold rushes, since they were more than one, changed the convict colonies into more progressive cities. The diggers, which were from other countries, brought new skills to the country of Australia. The gold rushes tripled Australia's population from 430,000 in 1851 to 1 1.7 million in 1871. Australia's first become a multicultural society during the gold rush period. How did the Eureka Stockade started? Well, it started over with disagreements over what the gold miners thought were unfair and unjust laws. Miners were not able to claim the land on which they work on. Furthermore, they are at a risk of being relocated to another area at a moment's notice. In addition, they're required by law to buy a license of 30 shillings a month 
and even for a brief time went up to two pounds for three months. Police frequently raided the mines to enforce licensing laws. However, in late November, the miners did something that the police authorities never thought they would do. On that day of defiance, they... Sorry, one, one sec. It's Peter Laylor. If you don't know who he is, then I'll tell you later in the video. Where was I? Oh yeah, on that day, they burned their licenses. And also stoned the police, but that's not important. Several miners were injured in the dispute. Many of the miners believe that the police and authorities favour the rich and wealthy while treating the poor with contempt. This was further reinforced when Scottish miner James Scobie Scoby? Scoby? I don't know. was murdered at the Eureka Hotel. Ten days later, after that, on 17th of October 1854, a gathering of between 1,000 to 10,000 crowded at the hotel to argue against the acquittal of James Bentley, or Bentley, and it's another James, yes, who is the hotel's owner and the prime suspect in being Scobie's murderer. However, Bensley or Bensley was released by a corrupt magistrate. And doing what all people do when they're angry, they went to the hotel and burnt it to the ground. Fortunately, or some can say unfortunately, James Bentley or Bentley and his wife Catherine has already fled to safety. On Saturday, 11th of November 1854, a gathering of more than 10,000 gold miners met at Bakery Hill. In this meeting, the Ballarat Reform League was formed. John Humphrey was elected as the first chairman in the newly formed group, with Kennedy and Ho Yeo, I don't know, as leaders. These three were all highly active in the Chartist movement in Britain. For you guys who don't know what the movement was, it was a call for six reforms. The change was to make it more democratic with free voice and vote for anyone above 21, who is psychologically able and has not been punished for criminal acts. Also to make a better check for corruption and bribery amongst authority. In fact, the bulk of the group has had connection to the Chartist movement with the social uproar that happened in Britain, Ireland and continental Europe in the 1840s, the vibe is quickly building up to Australia, and soon the reforms for free voice will be inev inevitable. Inevitable. In whatever. Immediate objects of the Reform Leagues were the disbandment of the Goldfields Commission and the abolition of the Miners and Storekeeper License Tax. The meeting at the Bakery Hill declared it is the inalienable right of every citizen to have a voice in making the laws that is called on to obey that taxation with representation is tyranny. The meeting was determined to succeed from Britain if the situation did not improve. If Queen Victoria continues to, to act upon the ill advice of dishonest ministers and insists upon indirectly dictating obnoxious laws for the colony under the assumed the reform will, which is the most royal as the people, the only legitimate source of all power. That went a bit too fast. So for the people who don't understand what I just said, they're just basically calling for some reforms, some changes. They want to abolish the gold miners tax, so get rid of it. Uh, or at least lower it down a bit. Uh, they're also saying they want some representation uh, in the government or the authorities. They want someone to like, speak on the miners' behalf. They're also saying if Queen Victoria continues to listen on dishonest ministers, then they will try and take over that, take over the authorities. That's what basically they're trying to say. That's what they want to change. In the following weeks, the Ballarat Reform League pursued to negotiate with Commissioner Reid and Governor Hotham, I mean Ho Hosom on the men being tried for the burning of the Eureka Hotel, and more importantly the abolishment of the gold mine license, democratic representation for the miners, and the disbanding of the gold commission. In response to this attempt, 
the governor increased license checks, which you might expect, infuriated the people. On November 29th, the gold miners heard the failures of the Reform League negotiations with the colonial establishment. Soon after that, the miners declared open conflict with the authorities and burnt their licenses. The police quickly bit back with orders to conduct license checks on November the 30th. Eight miners were arrested when they were caught without licenses and a military force had to go in and rescue the arresting officers because of the angry crowd that crowded around. On 30th November, 500 miners gathered under the Eureka flag and elected Peter Laylor as their uh, not again. As their leader, they sworn oath to the flag. We swear by the Southern Cross to stand truly by each other and fight to defend our rights and liberties. After the oath, they erected a stockade at Eureka and waited for the assault from the police force. On 3rd of December, there was a violent full-front clash with the two sides, the miners and the police. The police were supported with the full might of the military of around 300 men. The miners planned their defence and offence carefully, however they fell easily to the redcoats. 125 miners were captured as prisoners when the battle cleared. Many were injured, 6 police died and 22 miners died. Peter Laylor himself got shot in the arm, but luckily he escaped. His arm later got amputated. The miners lost the battle, but won the war. The authorities quickly realised that the miners were prepared to fight and even die for what they believe in. After the battle of the Eureka Stockade, 13 men were trialled at the Eureka Treason Trials in Melbourne from the 22nd of February to 27th of March 1855. They were held at the old Supreme Court house at the corner of Russell and La Trobe Street for anyone who lives in Melbourne, Australia. Although over 100 men were arrested, the cases against all but 13 were dismissed due to lack of evidence. The persecutor argued that the rebels had plotted treason against the Crown and the state, but in their defence the men appealed that not wanted to overthrow the Crown, but to stop the licensing fees for mining for gold. The Eureka Rebellion and the later related trials generated widespread interest within the colonial community. Soon the support for the diggers' cause went on to play a pivotal an important role in the forming of democracy and free speech in the country. The 13 of them were transferred to the old Melbourne jail from Bacchus Marsh lockup on Wednesday, the 7th of December, 1854. They were held in miserable conditions, fed at the minimum and were repeatedly stripped naked and searched. The inspector of Victoria's prison system, John Price, the man who made life so difficult for the prisoners, was murdered by a group of convicts three years later in 1857. up to our last scene, the Eureka flag and how it relates to today, the modern world. However, there is a huge mystery surrounding who designed the flag. It was rumoured to be designed by Canadian Henry Ross, who died at the stockade defending the flag. Also, one interesting piece of evidence is a sketch, which lies in the Ballarat Historical Society collection, which is said to be found in the tent during the Battle of the Eureka Stockade. After the battle, the captured flag was taken back to the government camp. 
Nowadays, the Eureka flag is used for many purposes. It is often seen as an icon for rebellion against the authorities. It has been seen in marches and parades by neo-Nazis and even draped on deceased communists, as I said so earlier. Uh, recently, there's been crackdown on groups that have been using the Eureka flag to push their own purpose. And the Yuga flag is not like connected to the group in like any way. From the 1960s, the flag became strongly connected with the Builders Laborers Federation, or BLF for short. Used by Jack Monday, that's with a U in 7 O, in Sydney and Norm Gallagher in Melbourne. The Eureka flags being carried at the militant trade union demonstrations. The union members also wore the flag on their garments. However, most people do not know much about the historical origins of the flag. However, soon it was only identified as the militant wing of the trade union movement. The Builders Laborers Union soon collapsed because of investigation which found that the BLF Federal Secretary Norm Gallagher accepted bribes and used the money to build a beach house. That sounds fun. After what happened, it was taken up by the Electrical Trades Union and the Construction Forestry mining and energy union and like another dozen or so organizations okay so this video is now at the at an end uh, thanks thanks guys so much for watching this video i hope you guys learned something about the eureka stockade or just how the eureka flag relates to the modern world because you you might have seen the eureka flag or not when you're walking by and you might be wondering what the flag is, but by watching this video now you know, or maybe you already know that beforehand, and this video was like a waste of time. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it.